No doubt, when you sit your medicine or dentistry interviews, a question about this will inevitably come up regardless of whether you're doing MMI or panel interviews. And that is, of course, about work experience. So to separate yourself to be in the top 20, 25% of people that get that conversion of a interview into an offer, I'm gonna tell you all the key things that you need to know, all the common questions that come up, some of the key differences between the three types of work experience that there are out there, and just how to answer so these the best way possible to make sure you really stand out to convert that opportunity into an offer. Hi, my name is Dr. Hilton, and as someone who has got through medicine interviews and dentistry interviews successfully, and I'm an interview panelist myself, I can tell you exactly what we're going to cover today that's gonna to help you, put you in a good position for really just shining when it comes to these questions. As you've probably heard me say a million times, if you've watched this really important series about how to succeed at interviews, your work experience will form the backbone of your application. It is the kind of thing that you rely on and fall back on when you get asked a question that you may not have been able to prepare for, if you've done a lot of, or had a lot of experience or spent a lot of time in hospital or practice, then you just really can draw on those experiences that you have at the tips of your fingers because you've lived them and that's the easiest way to remember them. But when we talk about work experience, there are three elements that you need to be aware of. The first is shadowing. So as you know, that's the bit where you go into a hospital or a practice and you just are a fly on the wall and see what a doctor is doing. The second is volunteering. And that is where obviously you give your time away for free in a variety of charitable or philanthropic roles that are gonna demonstrate a number of skills that we'll talk about later. And then finally, there's paid work. So a regular job that you have that showcases some of the skills and traits that they want to see of a good doctor. So let's start with the most important one, which is work experience. So. Typically, if you're applying to medicine, you'll have done maybe two weeks, hopefully, in a hospital or in a combination of that and the GP practice. And if you want to separate yourself and put yourself in that top 20, 25% to get a place, you really want to first understand what it is that you're trying to get across or what they're asking or trying to get from you when they're asking you about your shadowing and work experience. Now for shadowing, there are a handful of things that I wanna talk about. So the first thing that they want to see from your shadowing is that you've gained the insight into what the job is like. Also, maybe you understand how a hospital or maybe a practice works. Also, you know, the benefits and the drawbacks of a of life working in that job. Also, you want to show persistence and resilience and some determination because it's actually quite difficult to organize shadowing and I'm gonna talk about what to do if you haven't got shadowing um, later in the video, but it is really, really important to um, show the commitment because it is tricky and you do have to persevere and it takes a lot of dedication to go and get that. And you actually can build that into part of your answer that you may have contacted 20, 40, maybe even 100 people to finally be able to arrange that work experience because that is going to demonstrate to them that you want this badly enough to put that effort into a range such a difficult to get placement, especially in recent years with lockdowns. So I'm going to give you five golden principles and rules that you need to follow when you're talking about your work experience at your interview. Number one is keep a log. It's so important that you have a diary of everything that you experience, and even if you haven't written it at the time of doing the work experience, make sure you start collecting it now, because when somebody is asking you and you're only thinking about it for the first time, of course you're going to forget loads of things, but it's the details of what make a really good story or the so the disease that you saw and you looked up and you understand a little bit about it. So having those key bits of information are really the difference between a okay story and a really standout story. Now, like I say, if you haven't got that diary already, start building it now because things will slowly come back to you over the course of the next few weeks while you're preparing for your interview. And that will help just build a really good piece or a log, like I say, for you to read and just review in the week running up to your interview to make sure not only you are uh, fully updated and refreshed on all the things that you saw, but also it boosts your confidence to make you really aware of how much you've done and how much you deserve that place at medical school. Number two, as I said earlier, is talk about the challenge of getting it because it is difficult and it does demonstrate persistence that you managed to arrange something like that. Number three, it's really important to reflect. It's not so important what you did, but what you got out of it. It's exactly the same as when you're writing your personal statement. They want to see that you've understood the lessons that they're trying to get you to elicit from a placement in hospital. So like I said, remember those things that I talked about of why they want to see you do shadowing experience. So make sure that you've, in your reflection, kind of related how 
those things that you've seen have helped you understand some of the things they want you to do in order to go ahead with a career in medicine. Number four is avoid dropping names. They really don't care if you've gone to a fancy hospital or been with a fancy professor or a big name in the industry. They want to say, just like I said before, it's more about what you got out of it. So they don't care if you went to your local tiny hospital, as long as you have really understood the crux of what you need to get out of work experience, that is all that matters. And then my final golden rule, which is my golden rule for for all interview answers is do not be robotic. Be prepared but not rehearsed. So on my online course here where I teach you each question that comes up and exactly how to formulate an answer, I really hammer home that the difference between a good or okay student and a really outstanding one is somebody who understands the points that they want to make and they adapt them to the question or the style of the question that's been asked. and. Instead, what you get with okay people is that they have some pre can spiel that they just crowbar into any situation where it doesn't necessarily fit. And that is the difference between someone who understands the principles of what they need to get across and somebody who has just pre-prepared, like I say, a pre can spiel that they just kind of wait until a certain word triggers them to in initiate that and engage said response. And then they will just push that on the uh, interviewer without really understanding what they're being asked. So a really great structure for how to answer a question about work experience is three simple steps. First, what you did. Second, what you learnt. And then the third is how that will impact on you being a doctor. So what lessons have you carried forward? So when you get asked about shadowing, it will often be a very open question. So maybe tell us about any shadowing or any work experience that you've performed. Have you spent any time in the hospital? These sorts of questions. So the really the pro way to answer a question like this, because the really good people will have done more than one work experience or more than one shadowing, and you really want to get that across. So the very first thing that you do for a good answer is that you make a broad sweeping statement about all of the work experiences that you've conducted. Then I will show you in an example for how to answer this in a moment. But then the second thing is you then pick one of them and you go into usually the most notable, the, the most memorable, or just one of them that you go into and then start talking about it. Then, like I say, you go into the what you saw, what you learned, and then always, always reflect it back. And then it's always good at the end to kind of make sure that you show them or demonstrate an understanding of the realities of being a doctor, both the highs and the lows, because they want to understand that you are going into this profession with your eyes fully open and you understand that it's not going to be all roses and sunshine. So when somebody asks you a question about work experience and they say something along the lines of, tell me about your work experience, I would say something along the lines of, in my preparation for medical school, I undertook several several shadowing placements, one in a paediatric department, another in an orthopedic department, and then a week at a GP practice. The most notable one was when I was on my cardiology placement and I witnessed a patient suffering a cardiac arrest. I witnessed how the team worked together in that situation and how they really must be calm and communicate well to give the patient the best possible chance of surviving as only about 13% of patients survive a cardiac arrest in hospital. What I learned is that I must continue to develop my communication skills and continue being a good team player as well as develop my leadership skills so that when I'm in that position as a doctor, I can be an effective person who leads a crash call like that. It also helped me realize that not everything in a hospital is like you see in shows like ER and The Good Doctor. There are often crash calls and more often than not, they do result in a patient's death and that is difficult for patients uh, and doctors to deal with, but I just spoke to the doctors about how they handle situations like that and they talked me through some coping strategies for helping me um, deal with the death that doctors frequently see in their profession. So something like that will kind of acknowledge all of those tips that I talked about. It tells you a little bit about some exciting experiences and also make sure that it illustrates that you didn't just do that one placement, that you did several. and then you just go into the one that you want to talk about most. Finally, a little bit about the difficulty of getting shadowing experience lately. People do understand that it has been tricky at times, although I hope and I suppose at the moment it is getting easier. So really that excuse is starting to wane a little bit in its validity. 
but what they want to see when people are maybe even if they haven't managed to arrange some shadowing experience is they're at least making an effort to do something similar. So the Medical Schools Council released a document on what is acceptable alternatives to work experience and you should really review that if you are very much struggling to get hospital or practice shadowing experience and things that you can do as an alternative. Some of the things that they list are things like calling up a local GP and just asking if you could have 10 minutes to speak with them about the profession. Other things like virtual work experience. Now, even in today's world, even if you have got great shadowing, I would still recommend that you do at least one virtual work experience, maybe the Brighton and Sussex Medical School one or the Observe GP. Those are both fantastic virtual work experiences because what we are now is left in a situation where the a lot of, so, Going into hospital is like going into the wild. You don't know what's gonna happen. It could be a crazy day, it could be a quiet day. And no one is really gonna sit down to you, with you and go, oh, here is how the hospital works and do a 12 bullet point presentation. What will happen is you'll get a feel for it just by being there. But with these online work experiences now, what's happening is we are basically formalizing what is a, un, a, a kind of random experience of going into hospital into what is more like an online course. So now people have this textbook knowledge of what a hospital is like and what the role of a doctor is like, and they have a kind of, a kind of unnatural but good understanding of it. So just to level the playing field and make sure, making sure that you have the same knowledge base as other people who have done those, I would recommend that you do at least one, just so that you're up to date and on track in comparison to the rest of your peers. Another way is to speak to current medical students. A lot of people now have online profiles and Instagram pages about their life as a medical student. So by all means, feel free to contact them to understand what their life is like, because when you're applying to medicine, it's important to understand that you're not just going to be a doctor, but you're also going to be a medical student and you have to show that you're fit to undertake both. So that brings us to the second element of work experience, which is that of paid work. Now, do not underestimate paid work because it is really important for what we call transferable skills. What you will often see from somebody who's 16 and has maybe a Saturday job is that they will demonstrate a number of things. Firstly, reliability, because unlike your volunteering or your shadowing, you are expected to turn up and relied upon to conduct the job that you're there for. Another thing that they'll probably demonstrate in a paid job is communication skills. Let's say for example, if you are working as a waiter or waitress in a restaurant and maybe it's not uncommon for maybe people to complain about food. So that is a challenging communication situation where you have to adapt your style to accommodate the person and appease the person who isn't pleased. That's very similar to situations in hospital where patients are unhappy with being in hospital, maybe they're not happy about the hospital food or something about their care. And it's very often the junior doctor that has to go and speak to the patient and deal with that. Another thing they want to see is honesty. So for example, if you are working in a shop, you might have to handle money, you might be trusted with the keys and the ability to be reliable and honest with those things is a really important transferable skill to being a doctor as well. Finally, most places involve teamwork of some sort, whether you're just working with the manager above you or maybe a couple of other colleagues, it's really important to be able to function within that team. Again, which really translates to the multidisciplinary team that you are a part of as a doctor in hospital. So don't underestimate paid work. There are some great opportunities, especially if you're over 18 and applying as a grad. There are plenty of opportunities in the hospital, such as being a healthcare assistant, which is probably with no, without qualifications is the closest thing you can get to being a doctor without being a doctor at your stage. But even if you're under 18 and if you're over 16, you can work in a hospital, maybe giving out the food or cleaning, which is what I did. And that set me up massively for building a really successful med school application because just by virtue of being in the hospital and working there in the shift, I spent loads of time on the ward, loads of time talking to patients. It helped me see and arrange loads of other great opportunities. And that was such an important landmark for my success with my application to med school. And then finally, we have good old volunteering. It's really important to give back to society anyway, but when you're applying to medicine, they really want to see that you are giving back to your community in a few ways. 
Volunteering will show that you're self-sacrificing, that you can show empathy, that you are in a role that's willing to and, and you are able to care for others, which draws a lot of parallels with being a doctor, of course. The other things that you'll demonstrate from volunteering is a commitment because it's something that typically they want to see that you are doing regularly over a sustained period of time. Inevitably, because usually these roles are healthcare associated or something to do with looking after somebody else more often than not, they will inevitably develop your communication skills, which again, are such an important part of being an effective doctor. If you're struggling for volunteering experience, remember that with the amount of exposure you need in this, there's a fine balance between obviously not doing enough so that you don't have anything to talk about at interview, but then again, doing too much so that you don't have time to focus on the other important elements of your application or or your preparation or your exams and all the other bits that make up a strong application. So we want to get a nice balance in the middle where you have just done enough to be able to talk and have an intelligent conversation about your volunteering experience when it comes to interview. So even now, if you are kind of applying this year and you still haven't heard back from your interviews and you're thinking, oh, I'm not sure if I'll have time, there's plenty of time still to do two or three shifts should probably be enough to give you something to talk about. So a great website is the Royal Voluntary Service where you can enter your postcode and just look locally where all of the opportunities are available to you. So when it comes to answering these questions, whether it's about volunteering or paid work, exactly the same as your shadowing. You just follow that Here's a broad sweeping statement of what I did, or if it's just one particular job, you just go straight into it, and then just go through the exact same cycle, what you learned, what, what you saw, what you learned, and the experience or the reflections or the lessons that you gained from that, and how relate always relate them back to how they will make you a great doctor. The final thing that I will tell you is that this is the most important part of your entire application. If you've got to an interview stage, you are now at the final hurdle, and your destiny is the most in your hands that it can be of any other stage of the application. Really do not underestimate this. Every year I get dozens, if not hundreds of people who come to me who had applied the previous year, they'd underestimated interviews, got four interviews and not a single one resulted in an offer. So then they've come to us for help for the second attempt where we've then got them over that final hurdle. If you want to know exactly how I do that, check out this resource here where I've got a nice neat package of all of the questions, model answers and knowledge that you need to know in one place. We also do some one-on-one -on -one coaching if you want to find out more about that there. Otherwise, if you want some more free stuff, check out this essentials playlist for interviews that you can see all of the subjects and just the basics that you need to at least get you started. Thanks for watching and I'll see you over in one of those.